welcome to the Teachers on Fire podcast, where 21st century educators come to share, learn, and be inspired. We believe in the growth mindset, creativity, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and strategic uses of education technology. Our mission is to share news and views from teachers who are crushing it in the classroom and making a difference for learners everywhere. I'm your host, Tim Cavey. Let's jump into today's episode. Today I'm speaking with Ari Flewelling, a former high school English teacher. Ari is a staff development specialist at Riverside Unified School District in Riverside, California. Ari holds a master's degree in educational technology and is a Google certified trainer and innovator. She can often be found sharing her knowledge at EdTech Team events. I love EdTech Team. Ari's Twitter profile says, cool on the internet, even cooler in real life, which tells me Ari is a person who enjoys engagement and is just a fun person to be around. Ari, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Are you ready to talk education? I sure am. Thanks for having me. That's awesome. And it's my pleasure. Glad to have you here. Why don't you start by filling in some of the gaps I left out about your current work and context in education? So for my work in Riverside Unified School District, my emphasis uh, is on technology integration, of course, in the classroom, but really with an emphasis on empowering student creation and creativity. Our big push is we want to move our students past consuming with technology. They're really good at doing that, Um, but we want to actually, you know, inspire them to code or to write or to video and share in a multitude of ways. And I currently support 42 school sites ranging from preschool all the way up through adult ed. So it's a vast group that I get to work with, but it's always exciting because every day is different and everybody has different needs and desires. And it's always a fun puzzle trying to help find the right thing for the right person. Absolutely. And I love your focus, Ari, on create over consume. I think that's one of the big keys that we need to look to in 21st century education. Share about a low moment, Ari, that you faced in your teaching or education career and then how you overcame. Yeah, there was one year where when I was first starting out as a teacher, I found myself in a department that was less than collaborative. And, you know, it really bummed me out because the previous year I was at a different school site. So I'm sure all first year teachers have experienced this. You're a low person on the totem pole. So you get bumped around quite a bit. So I went from this beautiful, collaborative, wonderful, fulfilling existence in a department to a completely different school that unfortunately didn't have that same vibe. So it really, that was when I first discovered the power of the personal learning network. And I kept in touch with those people from my old department. And that's when I first started dipping my toes into Twitter and social media for education. And that was really what helped get me through because I realized, of course, you know, once I got out of my own bubble, I realized I wasn't the only person going through those type of things that you know, it was something a lot of first year and second year teachers went through. So I was able to connect with them and we were able to help each other through that part of the struggle. And then just connecting with other educators and other experts where, you know, I wouldn't always find support from the people around me physically. I was able to find it from those people digitally. Very cool. As an ed tech specialist, Ari, what is one piece of advice that you want teachers in today's classrooms to think about? It's so easy to go to a conference or go on Twitter and see like the newest, shiniest thing and be like, oh my gosh, I have to do that right now. It's amazing. I want to do it. I want to be on Twitter too, posting pictures about this. Right. And, you know, that's all well and good to want to try new things. I think that's definitely one of teachers' strengths is our willingness to try new things. But then at the same time is thinking about, What makes the most sense for my content and my context? I'm constantly asking that of my teachers because just because it works, you know, in an English classroom next door doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in your science class. And even if it works with your colleague that teaches science doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work with your group of kids in your room. So it's always important to take stock of what is your learning objective and how does that tool help you meet that objective in a way that makes sense. Because if the tool now takes your lesson that went from one day to three days, is that really worth it? And maybe it is because of what you're gaining from that tool. But if it isn't, then it's okay to not use a tool sometimes. I'll be one of the loudest people in the room telling my teachers like, yeah, no, maybe technology isn't the right tool for this. Because we don't want to, we don't want to try and do all the things techie at the, um, 
at the detriment of content and student achievement. We don't use technology for technology's sake. Yeah, exactly. So outside of ed tech, what else excites you about education today? Students. Students excite me so much. And being in a role where I don't get to see students every day, when I get to interact with them, where I get to see the fantastic things that they're creating, it just blows my mind. I'm constantly asking myself, like, what the heck was I doing at their age? Like, goodness, (laughs) like... I have students in our district that are making apps and websites and all sorts of fantastic things. They're making YouTube series or, you know, going viral with memes and then taking that, you know, that viral energy and turning it into something positive for the community. Like all that stuff just makes me so excited and so hopeful because, you know, we talk about you know, our standards. And of course, like students have to be able to recognize claim and argument and evidence and then be able to make their own. But then to see them go off into the world and to, you know, do that in such a way that isn't a five paragraph essay or is something that's going to impact a much larger audience, that makes me so excited. I mean, and even looking not just at the kids in my own district, but kids in other districts that are 3D printing prosthetics for animals or hosting TEDx events or even all of those amazing kids at Parkland and all the wonderful things that they've been able to do despite the tragedy that their school suffered. That that makes me excited and that gives me hope. And that's the whole reason why we all do what we do is so that way our kids have the opportunity to make those type of moments. Wow. Well said. Ari, moving forward, how are you looking to grow professionally and improve your practice this year? Can you share with us about a specific professional goal or an area that you're working on? Yeah, and I'm actually, it's something that is going to be a big focus of my Thanksgiving break as well as my winter break is taking stock of just all the things I'm doing, both in my day job as well as the stuff I do on the side and figuring out where am I getting the most bang for my buck? Where am I being the most successful and being okay with saying, I'm not going to do this anymore because I think what'll happen sometimes when we get into this space, we're like, oh, you know, I want to host a blog and a YouTube channel and a podcast and like, I want to be everywhere and sharing all of the resources and doing all of the things. And it's not sustainable. It just, it really isn't. And figuring out, you know, what do I want to do that is something that I feel like I have the most love and attention for, and then really putting in a lot of effort into that. And still maybe doing some of those other things, but not being, not getting to the point where I make myself upset if I don't do something or if something doesn't necessarily come out the way I wanted it. And just kind of trying that to find that balance to make sure I don't burn myself out unnecessarily. And I think that that's something a lot of educators have to deal with because So many of us come into the profession with such a big heart for kids and then such a big heart for the teachers we serve if we're in a teacher support role, but you can't fill from an empty cup and it's important to make sure that you keep yourself sustained. And that's something that I definitely want to focus on because I plan on being in a teacher support role as long as, you know, teachers want the support that I'm willing and able to provide. So I want to make sure that I take care of me. So I'm here to do it for the long haul. I think you're right on with the, you know, selecting the big rocks to use the Stephen Covey reference. And a lot of us as educators, we have that creative bug, don't we? And, you know, I would love to jump into more YouTube stuff, for example, but it it does come down to a time limitation. And am I doing the things I'm already doing well? I think you're right. We have to draw boundaries in our lives and in our practice. So looking outside of the school context and outside of education technology, Ari, what's another area of passion and learning for you? What else lights your fire outside of the classroom? I love gaming, whether it be video games, uh, traditional board games, European board games. I mean, today after you know we get off the podcast, I'm getting ready to go over to hang out with my friends and we're playing a board game called detective and it's it's in the first of its type type of game in the sense that you have a physical game that you play but then there's also a digital component and it's a series so the first time you play the game influences the second time you play the game so I love things like that because I like to look at the strategy. And I think, you know, teachers can learn a lot from games, not just from, you know, how they're structured and how they're incentivized, but 
this game that we're playing, it's all about looking for evidence and making an argument. And I'm like, how cool is this? Like, this would be so fun to adapt or to bring into a classroom with students because not only is it, you know, fun and there's a goal, but it does relate back to content and standards. So I love it. And I'm very excited for the Thanksgiving break because I've been putting off starting a character in Red Dead Redemption 2 because I know the minute I do kind of going back to that whole like work-life balance well now work-life video game balance (laughs) yeah yeah and I'm very excited to to get into that game I've watched my husband play a little bit of it and it's visually stunning and just to see what they've done with the storyline considering that the game is both a sequel and a prequel is really cool to me because as a former English teacher I love story stories and I love narrative so if you were to look at my board game shelf all of the games have some sort of narrative so it's fun to to get into that and to play that in a physical realm and hopefully sometimes win. <laughs> so what's your favorite gaming platform and which platform does Red Dead Redemption 2 run on? So I run it on a PlayStation. I think it's on play I think it might be on more than one platform, but I'm not too sure. But right now my favorite platform is the PlayStation where it's doing everything I need it to do and it makes me really happy. But I'm also ask I, I have on my Christmas list, I'm hoping Santa is kind to me and brings me the VR kit. For the ah, yes. I'm really excited because yeah, yeah. one of my colleagues, Karen Sanchez in RUSD, is doing some amazing work with the Oculus and figuring out how to best integrate that into our school district for education. And I'm astounded by the stuff that she's doing and the lab that she's actually creating. And, you know, I just want a little peek into that world with my PlayStation uh, just to see, you know, what's what's the all the hype. Uh, and to get excited. Plus, you know, who wouldn't want to virtually use a bow and arrow to like go slay a dragon? Totally, totally. Yeah, we we all know VR is coming. And I mean, it's already here, but we know it's coming in different ways into education. So you're right. That's going to be fascinating to watch that unfold. And then Ari, share about a personal habit, something that contributes to your success on a daily or regular basis. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to do it as much as I enjoy just due to my schedule, but I really love working out. It's for me, working out is an unplugged activity. So I don't have any access to the internet and it's great to have an hour to two hours a week or a day to just completely unplug and really kind of retune in and listen to what my body's telling me. And I think that that's really important for, you know, my mental and my physical health to to give myself that time away from the internet, but then also to use that time productively to, to help out the rest of my, my physical being. Mm -hmm. We're moving into some quick picks here, Ari. And so if you can try to stick to one or two of the following, if possible, but the goal here is to hear about the voices that have been influencing you in education lately. So we'll start at Twitter. Tell us about someone we should be following there and explain why. If you are not already following Ann Cosma, you need to follow Ann Cosma. She was one of those people that helped me out when I was first starting out and first struggling uh, when I was in that less than collaborative department. And she is the most kind-hearted person I know. And she is always so willing to help anyone with anything. And now that she is a part of Flipgrid, just the things that she's able to share about that platform and about how people can use that platform to amplify student voice. I'm just, I'm so excited for her and so excited for everyone that she gets to influence. And she's just a beautiful person. And Cosma, great. Next, point us to an ed tech tool. Now you are an ed tech specialist, so this should be interesting. Point us to an ed tech tool that you currently love using in your practice or one that you see teachers using in their classrooms. I mean, you you built up the hype, but then now my answer is so lame by comparison, <laughs> but I'm still in love with all of the power and possibilities of Google. I think that, you know, there's a lot of things that our students can do and are doing in that platform and in that suite of tools that really, I love it because it's student data privacy compliant. It's one login. It's one password. It all syncs with Google Classroom. They don't have to go to a billion places on the internet to do a billion things. They could just go to their drive. And I think sometimes my teachers will be like, well, wait, but it's not as pretty. And I'm like, yeah, but they can make it pretty. Think of the fact that, you know, they can't just use a pre-made template Now they have to think a little bit more and think I always like to jokingly say that, you know, we give we give our students creative constraint in the sense that we don't give them all the options or we don't give them all the tools. We might get something better than we thought 
Or now instead of them focusing on all the bells and whistles, they actually have to focus on the content of what you want. Um, so I really love Google. And every day it seems like there's a new update to surprise me and to to just make using those tools better. I don't think the G Suite is lame at all, Ari. And so I'm so glad you mentioned that. And you're right, Google is constantly innovating. And I don't know about you, but I, I like to keep in touch with the Google Teacher Tribe podcast. And I'm sure you are even more plugged in with all the changes that are coming to Google all the time. You know, just one little thing that I've noticed lately is the in Gmail suggestions that appear at the end of your line as you're typing. I love that. And I know, aren't they fun? I mean, sometimes they're right or sometimes they give you ideas. But, you know, I think within a matter of years, those are going to start appearing in Google Docs. And I was just talking about this with my last guest. And that's that's actually going to help some learners. So I'm excited to see where AI is is actually making communication even more effective and efficient. Oh, yeah, I totally believe that. And even just yesterday, I made a slide deck for my presentation. My Participants made a copy of it. And then a week later, we came back to that presentation in a different training. And I was like, oh, if y'all made a copy last week, you'll need to make a new copy because I made some updates. But one of the participants is like, oh, no, I see your new updates. I just updated your slide. And I was like, participants say what? And she showed me that since I had copied and pasted the slides from another presentation and let them stay linked, she was able to hit the refresh button, even though she had made a copy. Oh, my goodness. I was amazed because I was like, I saw that on my version and I'm like, okay, it probably makes sense because I'm the owner of all these things. But the fact that the linking of the slides maintained even beyond her making a copy, I was shook as the kids say, or maybe, <laughs> I don't know if the kids still say that, that probably, they probably don't, but you, I, I was very surprised. <laughs> G Suite is amazing and I love it. Next, recommend a book or a one that you've been reading lately or one of your all-time faves that has influenced you in some way and tell us why you recommend it. So the book I recommend, it's one I'm currently reading and I feel like it's going to be one of my all-time faves. It's called America Like Me and it's a book of stories that have been compiled by the actress America Ferreira and it's from different people of all walks of life. And it's their stories of what it means to be an American to them. And how does their life in America, how is it influenced by their family of origin, their family of choice, their race, their ethnicity, their class. And I think it's a really beautiful compilation of stories from men and women of, you know, all backgrounds, uh, because it kind of, to me, gives insight into populations of people that I don't know intimately. And I think it's a great opportunity for a great book for teachers to read, a great book for students to read, just because to be able to get that insight is so valuable and so important in our really in our very diverse country because, you know, we're not we're not all the same, but in some ways we are. And a lot of these the stories you could see some universal themes and struggles come to light. And I'm really enjoying it, especially as someone that, you know, growing up, you know, my parents I, I didn't learn Spanish growing up, even though I'm I think it's like 53% Mexican and rest of the percent is uh, Spanish. And, you know, growing up, I struggled with my identity because I didn't necessarily like meet other people's expectations of what a Mexican person should be or a Spanish person should be. So to read this book and to, to see other people have struggles like that in other communities too is really comforting, but then it's also really enlightening. And I think it would be a great read for teachers just because you'll never be able to know everything your students are going through. But it's great to get an insight to help build that empathy for your learners. That sounds like a really beautiful book. And you're right. It's all about empathy and understanding the other. So America like me. Are you a podcast listener, Ari? And if you are, recommend a podcast that we can add to our deck as we, you know, drive those daily commutes and, and try to get some inspiration along the way. Yeah, I'm going to recommend two. I hope that's okay. Yeah, the first totally one fun. is The first one is It's Been a Minute with Sam Sanders. So I like the in-depth look he takes into topics and then also the way he looks at the news and things that are happening because he'll bring on guests and they'll talk about things that they see that are important to them. But I also like to his level of interactivity with his listeners, just because they help him bring stories to light that may not normally get covered in mainstream media. So I think that that's really good to help round out my perspective, because I'm a big NPR listener, but you know, not every story always gets told. So I think that that's a really good podcast. And then that's my more like, quote, unquote, professional 
podcast. And then one podcast I really enjoy listening to for a bunch of laughs, but then also to learning, but in a different way, is called By the Book. And it's these two women that will choose a self-help book and live as the book tells them to live for a solid two weeks and record their adventures with it. They've done books like The Secret, The Curated Closet, uh, Zero Waste Living. And it's really interesting to hear you know, what they say about the book and then how it affects their lives and also their husband's lives and the lives of people around them. So it's always a, a fun little podcast to listen to. And I also get to learn cool stuff. And it's a good way to kind of uh, pre-read a self-help book to see if it's something you want to dig deeper into. Buy the book. Okay. Well, that sounds interesting. And it also sounds very production intensive if they actually have to read and study a whole book for every episode. So does sound very amusing. And then we're moving into video for the next couple of questions. Ari, tell us about a YouTube channel that you enjoy. And this might be one that is helpful in your practice or one that you just find personally amusing. I watch a lot of TED Talks, so I'll refer to the TED channel or the TED Ed channel quite a bit. Uh, and then, of course, you know, different YouTube channels. Whenever I find a new tool, I always look to see if they have a YouTube channel just because Do you already have tutorials made that I can use? Do you already have, you know, promotional videos showcasing your best products and whatnot? I think a good example of that is the Pear Deck YouTube channel. I feel like they do a really good job of utilizing that medium to help their users. So I'll definitely look into all of those. And then like the big organizations like EdTech Team and Q um, and even organizations that because I'm based out of California. So I'll look up other, you know, state based tech conferences and see do they have YouTube channels and see what they're posting and sharing. Because it's kind of amazing. Like sometimes if you find like the YouTube channel for a big conference, they film and post their keynote speeches up there. So I may not be able to go to the conference, but I might be able to tune in to those big events as a part of the conference and follow along especially too now with the advent of YouTube Live being a little bit easier for some people to do, especially if they're doing it from the mobile platform, which is really cool. Uh, So those are some of my edu suggestions. And then my fun suggestion is I really love these two YouTube creators called Rhett and Link. They have a show called Good Mythical Morning, which is kind of a riff on a morning talk show. Um, But of course, they're doing all of, you know, funny internet things. And it's just a great way. Like I don't watch it in the morning. I usually watch it when I come home with, from work with my husband. And for us, it's just a great way to to get some good laughs and to have some mindless um, fun. And generally, they're also pretty kid friendly. So that's usually nice because I always suggest it to my friends that have kids. So it's a fun thing to gather around the TV screen together and, and stream. It's true. Love Rhett and Link and my boys are big fans as well. Last question, Ari, just for fun, when you're at the end of your day and you've got no energy left for anything productive or let's say any red, what was it? Red Dead Redemption. (laughs) What what are you watching on Netflix these days? Great British Bake Off. I can't bake, but I love watching other people bake. And I always find their, their kind natured competition between the contestants very comforting. It's so different than state based reality TV shows. So just to see these people obviously wanting to win the show, but being willing to like help frost other people's biscuits is just just so heartwarming and so pure. And I love it. I'm also digging the cartoon Hilda. It's based off of a a comic book and it's great. It's definitely it's made for kids, but adults can watch it and enjoy it. And the animation style is really great. And then also too, I'm really enjoying Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj. I think he's taking an interesting look into some topics that I wouldn't have otherwise known. Hmm. Those are some great picks that I look forward to checking out. Ari, this has been so fun. What are the best ways for the listeners to follow you and get to know you a little bit better? Just search for EdTech Ari on the internet. You'll probably find me on Twitter, my website, my Instagram, my Facebook. I'm there. I'm all over the place. I have a YouTube channel as well. You can also find it with EdTech Ari. And uh, hopefully sometime soon, eventually there'll be a book you can look up too. But that's that's a work in progress. Yay. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that. Sounds good, Ari. Again, thank you so much for sharing your time with the podcast today. This has been fun and enlightening. Take care and we'll talk again soon. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Teachers on Fire, where teachers come to share, learn, and be inspired. Please subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review on iTunes, and follow us on Twitter at Teachers on Fire. I'm your host, Tim Cavey, saying goodbye for now, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Teachers on Fire podcast.